So Vern is going to instill some belief in you, what you're capable of, and instill some belief in the product because everybody, everybody needs and wants Cutco. Everybody's life is better with Cutco. So thank you, Vern, for, yeah, giving us some goods here. So take it away, take some notes so your believer is not broken. Sweet. Uh, how, how much time do I have? Like an hour? Yeah, hour or so. They, yeah. and, until their believer is not broken anymore, Vern. All right, cool. Could be 10 minutes, could be 20. If they need it, maybe 25. It depends. You, okay. You'll have to judge that based on their, on their energy. Okay. So I want, I want all of you to be honest for, for a second. I want you to raise your hand if you truly believe that Cutco, one, is worth the money, and two, that it's the greatest product of its kind in the history of the universe. And be honest. Don't raise your hand because you think we want you to raise your hand. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for being honest. I appreciate that. All right. Keep them up so I can see. I can smell like all stinky lion armpits from down here. <laughs> okay. All right. So if that was was true, then well, I, maybe maybe I shouldn't say if that was true. Um, yes, the greatest knife product and one of the greatest products. Okay. I literally want you to ask yourself, what else could any of your parents, your friend's parents spend like our whole cutco kitchen is like $10,000 plus. Okay. I want you to ask yourself, what else could your parents or any kind of Mac customer invest $10,000 on? That's American made. They're actually going to use every single day for the rest of their life. Pass on to their kids for generations and never have to pay for it ever again. I'll wait. Make sure you time it on your Rolex. Vern, time yeah. it. Yeah. Don't tick tock, it just glides. Literally nothing. And if there if there are some products, it's just like Cutco. American made, expensive, guaranteed forever. Like snap on tools, exactly. So there's nothing else. Think about all the different products, all the different things that we spend money on. Cars. Cars, you can spend anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000 to $100,000 on a car. And you already know, like five to seven years from now, you're going to buy another one. Think about this. This is the culture that we live in. You go out and you, you, put your, you, you get car payments for like 36, 72 months. As soon as it leaves the lot, the value goes down. You end up paying so much more, so much, much, so much more for the car in the long run. And then when you're done paying off the car, what do you do? Someone say it. I don't want to, I don't want to see it in the chat. I don't want to hear it. Probably going to go and get a new one before it's done. Get a done. new one. They're going to get another 36 loan payment, car, like car payment, and do it all over again. How does that make sense? Or they get a mortgage for like 30 plus years, knowing that the average household, they're going to move like, I don't know, at least five times in their lifetime. So they're going to take out another loan and essentially never pay it off. All of you that are going to school are basically guaranteed to graduate with 20, 30, 40, $50,000 in student loan debt that some of you will be paying off well into your 40s and 50s. And it's not even guaranteed that you're going to get a job in your field when you graduate. When I'm, like my brother-in-law just graduated from school, literally, I think a year or two ago, and he hates his job. Literally hates his job. The thing that he went to school for, for like four years, Graduated in debt with, 
or his his grandmother spent a lot of money on a year and a half later two years later hates his job but yeah you're going to tell me that spending thirteen hundred dollars or three thousand dollars on a set of knives that's guaranteed forever isn't worth it come on man get out of here for those of you that think it's okay for your for your customers to say Oh, well, you know, my knives are, you know, they're, they're okay. They're good enough. You're not doing your job. I'm just being real with you. Your customer's job is to give you objections. It's your job to handle it. Sales and life is about handling objections. Okay. I handle the objection like five, six times before I even drop down. Unless I know in my gut, that is not the right option for them. Literally last night, one of my appointments, we were looking at like a set of cookware with an upgrade. And I didn't know that he had a girlfriend. He was like, you know, and he bought cookware for me like in the mall. He's like, I, I got to talk to my girlfriend. Literally handled it six times. Before I was like, you know what, let's just do a reserve your, your first call special. Just get the six table knives that you wanted for now. And if you want the cookware later, we can add it on out and I'll save your deal. All right, cool. I'll get the six table knives. But that was after I tried like five to six times because I knew he really wanted it. Okay. Look, I don't care if your customers have Gustav or Shine or Damascus. There's no other knife brand that can top Cutco. Guarantee it. Because all knives eventually get dull. All of them. Literally all of them. So I don't care if they've had it for 10 years and it's just not getting dull. They're either going to have to pay a boatload of money to get it resharpened or they're going to have to eventually replace it. So you know what? Those customers just end up with a high quality set of dull knives. So when my customers have a set of Wusa or Shun, I'm like, great. You know why you should still get a set of Cutco? Because this is insurance for your kitchen knives. Would you agree, Mr. Jones, that your knives, no matter how great they are, they're going to eventually get dull, right? So you already know that you're going to eventually have to replace these knives. So why wouldn't you go ahead and spend the money that you're already going to spend a few years from now so that you already have a great set waiting for you? Hey, Vernon, we just remodeled our kitchen. Oh, that's great. I bet it looks beautiful. If you don't mind me asking, how much did you spend on your, your remodel? $27,000. Awesome. So if you spent $27,000 to make your kitchen look nice, don't you think you should spend an extra three grand to actually, for, for the things you're actually going to be using in your kitchen every day for the rest of your life? Oh, yeah, maybe we should do that. Yeah, I think you should. No kidding. This was last summer. They came up to me. They were looking at an ultimate set. They were like, we're remodeling a kitchen. I was like, yeah, that's awesome. The, the, average remodel, the, the average kitchen remodel is like 20 grand. He's like, yeah, we're spending more than that. I'm like, yeah. So look, I know it looks beautiful. It looks great. But look, on top of those $10,000 countertops, you have a dull, crappy set of knives. Inside those $10,000 drawers, you have a drawer full of mixed match flatware. Inside those $10,000 cabinets, you have a hodgepodge of toxic cancer pots and pans. So why would you spend 20 grand making the skeleton of your kitchen look good, but not invest that money on the things you're actually using every day in your kitchen? And they're like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Like, yeah, I know. And they got the ultimate set. Whoever has the most confidence wins. So my customers don't walk away from me or hang up on Zoom unless I know for sure that they're not going to get it or they can't get it without talking to their spouse. If I could not get their spouse on the call with me. And then I'm hounding them down like, hey, did you talk to him? 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 Like, man, you're really bugging me. Like, hey, I tried to get your husband on the call. Right? Like any objection that, that my customers give to me, I'm going to be more confident than them. Oh, we're paying for school. Great. That's awesome. 
Hey, Mr. Jones, if your refrigerator went out right now, would you have to think about it? Would you have to wait till Jimmy graduated from school? No, they would go to wherever they go and drop a grand or two on another refrigerator. When the value exceeds the price, they're going to buy every single time. Okay. And look, I don't care like where you're at right now. I don't care what your numbers are. I don't care where you're at in sales. If you were on the, the, uh, the, in, in the meeting on Monday, you saw this, but I just want to show this to you. Okay. So my, my first summer, $250 fast start, 527 first summer. All right. Then I had six orders for 1161 for the whole entire fall, the whole fall, like whole three, four, three to four months, six orders. Look at my average order, not even 200 bucks. And then I got worse at my job. Jason didn't, didn't, good, didn't do a good job with me. Uh, I did. And so I got worse and then I got a little better 231 and then I got worse again, 182. But hey, I got 22 orders, so I'm finally working a little bit. And then here we go. Finally, I found something that I really wanted to work hard towards. 18 orders, 369 average order. And then 30 orders, 10K, 336. And then, did, then I did all this cool stuff. By the way, this guy right here, that's the guy that's speaking at SC2. That's Ben Skemper. Okay? And I worked hard. Okay, and then 15 orders, 5,100, average order still okay. Oh, and then I sucked really bad again. 197 average order, 18 orders for the whole fall. Then I didn't get the company trip and my brand shit worse. 17 orders, low average order. But I just kept going. I just kept showing up. I just kept calling Mr. And Mrs. Jones. But then finally got a little bit better, 38 orders, 363 average order. 36 orders, 17,000, 465 average order. Then, then things started to really turn up. 66 orders for 20, almost 26 grand, basically in two months. Okay. And then this 2,500 that sales immersion, that sales immersion, Ben Skepper led that. So I'm like, oh, I paid 2,500 bucks to, to hear from this guy. He was a beast in the company. So yeah, I went to go learn from him. And then went to, went to CSP, 107K, 107,000, 181, got a nice sword, and then 205, and then 305. So guys, I'm literally that definition of if I can do it, any of you can do it, okay? I'm not like all of, literally, all of you are crushing my fast start and my first summer and my second summer. Like literally all of you, okay? So I promise you, if you see Mac customers, you read the manual, you have fun, and you handle the objections, you're gonna sell Cutco. One of my other appointments today, first time that, that I'm meeting them, we get on Zoom, we're make, I'm making them laugh like from the jump, literally from the jump. They're just cracking up, having a great time. First it was me and Eric, we were laughing. Then, then his wife comes in and like, oh, I thought you were uh, working out. I'm like, yeah, she heard you having fun and got, and got uh, uh, suspicious. So she came in to see what was going on. And then they just started laughing. Literally the whole entire appointment, we're just laughing, cracking jokes. So then I show them the, the, the first package deal, which is like a full Siggy upgrade with a frying pan. They're like, hey, let's, let's, you know, we're going to talk about it for a quick second and we'll, we'll hop back on. I'm like, awesome. They come back 15 minutes later. Eric's like, hey, can you give me the price of the veggie knife and the bony knife? Like, yeah, absolutely. Before I do that, can I show you one more option? He's like, yeah. So I showed them an option where they could pick five of any knives that they want and put it in the same block. Like, pick your five favorite knives. Awesome. Boom. Here's the price. Here's my, here's my price. Only like 192 over five months. What do you think? Like, yeah, let's do that. Awesome. High five. Right? And you just handle the objection. 
uh, yeah, like I said, I just wanted to show you what I could do if you got everything on your wish list. I'll definitely tell you what those two pieces are, but I think you're going to like this other package a little bit better. You guys just have to be more confident. You, you know, sales and dropping down is not something that you do to a customer. It's something that you do for a customer. If all your customers had at least a homemaker set, would, would their cooking experience be 10X? Yes or yes? I need to see everybody. Yes or yes? Okay. So your job is to help them get a set of Cutco in their kitchen. Because they may not seem like they want it, but as soon as they cut that first slice of tomato, oh, my gosh. How much did we spend on this? I don't even care. Let's get three more. This is amazing. Because now I tell those same customers that tell me when they were, like, suspicious about getting a boning knife or upgrading, I talked to them this year, like, Vernon, I love those, those new knives I have. And I'm like, yeah, aren't you glad you listened to me? And every time they're like, yes. I'm like, great. This is going to be a much better relationship now. I tell my customers, hey, look, I'm your Cutco Kitchen Consultant. I'm not going to suggest something to you that's not going to bring you value. Okay? When I have, when either, uh, let's see, when, when the husband tells me something like, oh, I don't think we're going to use this. I'm not going to use that. I literally tell him, hey, you know, Mr. Jones, I'm kind of like your wife. I'm always right when it comes to Cutco. And then they both laugh and like, all right, yeah, you're right. So I just have more confidence. If you build rapport, you can say anything with a smile and get away with it. Again, we, you know, we got to add our, we got to, you know, we get, we're paying for school. Okay. Hey, if the school came back and said, hey, we made an error, it's $3,000 more, would you still pay for your kids to go to school? Well, yeah. Like, all right. Then we can make this work. Just add it on to the top. We're buying a new house. That's awesome. That's great. When are you guys moving in? Great. Well, hey, since you're buying a house, wouldn't it make sense to invest in something you're going to be using in the house every day for the next 20, 30, 40 years? Like, guys, the, the only difference between me and you is experience and coaching and confidence. I just have more confidence in a product than you guys right now because, yes, I've sold more, but it's because I've been around more. You guys saw my stats, okay? If I started this summer, I probably wouldn't even be on this call right now. Jason and Liz would be like, wait, wasn't there some other dude supposed to be on here? Yeah, I don't know. I think you sold, like, two CPOs first week, and I, I don't know. It's, Liz, is he alive? Can you call him? Is he? Vern, are you, are you up? That, that's literally how, how it, it would be right now. Guarantee it. Okay? So trust me. I could go on and on and on. How many of you were, was in training when you saw me cut a piece of paper with a 70-year-old piece of Cutco? How many of you saw that? Why aren't you telling your customers about that? Are you guys telling your customers that man, look, when I was in training, they showed me a 70-year-old piece of Cutco that looked brand spanking new and sliced like it was brand new. How many of you are telling them that story? Like, wow, really? That's amazing. Yeah, Mrs. Jones, what would it be like if 70 years from now, no matter if you're using it or your great-grandkids are using it, your Cutco is cutting like the first day that you got it? That'd be amazing. Absolutely. So yes, Cutco is going to be really expensive. It's going to be the most expensive set of knives that you ever buy. But I promise you, 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, you will be saying it's the best investment that you've ever made. And I can confidently say that to new customers because that's what my customers tell me on a daily basis. Like think, think of it this way, guys. Nine out of 10, eight out of 10 appointments that I do are with previous Cutco owners. Why would 98% of my business, 90% of my business be with people who don't buy Cutco? That doesn't make sense. Like literally doesn't make sense at all. Okay? 
So the business owner that I had, he's like a huge Cutco fan. Cause he has like the whole Cutco kitchen at home. And like, when I go over to their house, they literally take my catalog and say, yep, we want this, we want that, we want this, we want that. So they bought gift sets for their, for their company two years ago, 75 gift sets. And then last year they tried something else and their employees almost all quit. Cause they're like, what is this garbage that you're getting us? Where is our Cutco? So then he has his, you know, assistant call me and say, yeah, we, Brandon, we, we want to get, get that cut code again. I'm like, uh-huh. That's what I thought. So now every year they're going to be buying 60 to 75 gift sets from me. Who would do that if it wasn't worth it? They could just get them little cheap little baskets every year. But you know what? They want to give something memorable and something of quality and value. That's why they give cut code. Look, if you guys want me to do all your demos for you, I'll be more than happy to, to, to do that, okay? If you guys want me to call all your, all your no sales, I'll, you know, just, you know, just give me those, give me those people, okay? Because I'm gonna tell all y'all right now, if you guys quit because you think you're not doing well, guess who's gonna be sharpening their knives next summer and upgrading them? Like, oh, who, where'd you get your knives from? Oh, some college kid. I did it for a summer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you got this essential set? No wonder why your knives are trash. Let me show you the set you should have gotten, this ultimate set. Oh, wow, we didn't even see this. Uh-huh, yeah, I know. I promise you. So you need to stick around. You need to help your customers maximize their cut collection. And whatever they have right now, next summer, I'm going to teach you how to upgrade them to the sets that they really wanted. Because that's what I do. I take customers' Cutco experience from where they are to where they want to be. That's my job. That's what I tell them in the, in the beginning of, of, of every, every appointment. And you have to be on fire for Cutco for the opportunity that it gives you. Carmen, if you don't mind me asking, how much money have you made this summer so far? I honestly lost track a little bit, but I- Of course I, you did. I feel like I'm at like seven or eight. So yeah, once, once you sold thirty grand, you you've you've earned eighty five hundred dollars once you sold thirty grand. And um, yeah. and on average, how many hours a week are you like actually working? Um, other than meetings, probably like not during this push, obviously, but like probably ten because I do like ten demos ish, hour so hour and like half. Ten to fifteen hours a week on average. Yeah. Um, if you are at a normal job, which stands for just over broke, by the way, uh, if you're at a normal job, how much money would you expect to make this summer? Um, not, not that much. And I'd be working like 40 hours a week. So. Right. <laughs> and look, take this the right way. She's not better than any of you. She just works more consistently, works harder reads the manual, calls her manager, and goes field training. She reaches out to people. That's it. Like, guys, she's going to make over $10,000 this summer working part-time. Are you kidding me? She can't tell her friends she's making that money because they will jump her. Okay? Corona will not stop them from jumping her. Okay? That's why, that's why she doesn't have friends on the team so that she can just sell to all their parents. I don't blame you. I do the same thing. Shoot. You know? So you have to be hyped for what this opportunity can do for you. This is literally how college kids pay for their tuition. We have a program where you can graduate school debt free. Can you actually imagine that? Like, Josie has a really expensive major, chemical engineering. Her boyfriend is another engineer, so they're gonna make some buccal bucks, okay? My first, my first cup of kitchen was to, a, to an, an, an engineer, so they, they make some good money, okay? So we have people that have like high caliber degrees that can graduate debt-free by selling some knives. Like, are you kidding me? Legally too, by the way. So I really want you to hammer this in your head. When your customers say, I want to think about it. Don't feel bad by getting up in their face. 
When they are giving you an objection, they're just telling you what they need more of. I need to think about it. That's them saying, hey, Katie, we need more value to know why we need to spend this money on this homemaker set. I need to talk to my spouse. Well, hey, first of all, you didn't do your job and get the spouse there in the first place, but I don't, I don't feel comfortable making this kind of investment without my spouse there. This is my favorite one. And just cut me off if you need me to. Oh, I love doing this. Okay. So when I'm like, you know, at a booth or whatever, and, and people come up, if, if like the, 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 the wife comes up and I ask her like, hey, you know, if you see something, could you maybe possibly get it, you know, make a decision without your husband there? And she's like, yeah, probably. And this, this was last December. I, I forget her name. But she's looking at the ultimate set. And, she, and she's got a big rock on her finger. So I'm like, yep, come here. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so we're looking at the ultimate set. And, and Langston, she was like, well, you know, I should probably talk to my husband. Okay, yeah, I get it. Hey, by the way, Mr. Jones, um, out of you and your husband, who does most of the cooking? Like, oh, me. Okay. Hey, just curious. Is there any chance that your husband, like, hunts or fishes or, or bikes, golfs, anything like that? And she's like, yeah, he hunts. Like, okay, awesome. He probably enjoys it, right? Yeah. Hey, how many guns does he have? Oh, well, he's got like five. Okay. Hey, just curious. On average, how much do you think those guns cost, Mrs. Jones? Oh, at least $500. Okay. So he spent $2,500 on guns. Okay. Does he go on a hunting trip every year? Yeah. How much does he usually spend to, to go on a hunting trip? Does he also get an outfitter when he's out there? Because those cost money. Yeah. Okay. And he does that like every year? Yeah. Okay. So let me get this straight, Mrs. Jones. You let your husband hunt, do all this stuff that he doesn't have to do, but he's not going to let you get a quality set of knives to cook his food for him every day? Is that what you're really telling me right now? I'll tell you what, you get the set. Here's exactly what you say to your husband, Mrs. Jones, if he says return the set. You tell him like, all right, I'll return the set when you return all your guns and you cancel all your hunting trips. And she's like, you know what, Vernon? Hell yeah, let's get this set. Sometimes Mrs. Jones just need to get gassed up, y'all. I'm just saying, you know, you just need to get, you just need to give her some confidence, okay? I love that. That happened to me in Eau Claire a couple of years ago. Her, her like, Mrs. Jones's mom was like, you know, your husband does all the hunting. Oh, I went off. Said the same thing. And she was like, you know what? Yeah, let's get this homemaker set. You right. Like, hell yeah, Miss Jones. Let's go, girl. You go, girl. Let's do it. Have your husband call me. All right, I'll tell him the same thing. I don't care, Miss Jones. Okay? You just got to gas him up sometimes. And I, by the way, when the husband is there, I say the same thing. And I ask him that. Like, okay, so you go golfing. Nice. Okay. What kind of clubs you got? Okay, nice. That's, a, that's like the really nice brand, right? Okay. And how, how often do you go? Do you go like every day? No one's going to say, no, I go like a couple months. Okay, a couple months. Okay. And you, you got like a golf membership, right? Yeah, is that like, that's like, I don't know what, a couple hundred bucks a year? Okay, cool. So can I ask you a question, Mr. Jones? Yeah. So um, if your wife lets you golf, does something that you don't need to do, but you like to do, why wouldn't you let her have a set, a quality set of knives that she's actually going to use every day to cook your food for you while you're out playing golf? He's not going to say no at that point. He, he's just not. If he is, he's going to be living on that golf course. You heard me? So that's the kind of confidence you need to have. That's exactly the kind of confidence you need to have. So I could go on and on and on, okay? with handling objections, having confidence. It's a great opportunity for you. And look, the, the, like the best thing is the money that you're gonna get from this is gonna be gone within a couple of weeks. I tell customers this all the time, like look, the, the little commission I get from this is gonna be gone within a couple of weeks. It's gonna be spent, saved, or invested. You're the one whose family's gonna have this for generations. You're the one that's gonna have this 20, 30, 40 years from now. So who's really getting the better end of the deal? They're like, oh, well, I guess we put it that way. I am like, yeah, exactly. You absolutely are.
So I need you guys to have more confidence when you're talking to Mr. and Mrs. Jones. You are guiding them. Pretend like you're trying to convince your friends to do something that you want them to do. Josie and I had to talk about how she's been trying to convince her boyfriend to go to, to, to scary movies. I'm like, Josie, it's the same thing. You got to handle those objections. And that night she saw the homemaker and convinced her boyfriend to watch A Quiet Place. Let's look, go. Look at that. Same thing. Literally, same exact thing. That's all it is. Like, oh, you know, I don't know if I want to go to this water park. Well, why? I don't know. I, I just think, I don't know. I just don't want to cut my leg. Like, okay, well, look, if you cut, if you cut your leg, I'll take you to the hospital. All right, you know what? Look, how about we just go to the water park? All right, we go on just a little slice. And if you want to go on the bigger ones, we can. If that, we'll just play in the kiddie pool. All right, we'll just do that. Boom. Same thing. Handling objections is literally life. Okay, mm -hmm. so Jason, you're gonna have to like cut me off because right. I don't know if, if this is working for them. But I hope this is helping you like have more confidence in yourself and a job and in Cutco. Is this Call working? Me. Are we I'm good? Just... Is your believer still broken? Are you good? Should we keep talking? Vern, that was fire. That was so good. Let's give it up for Vernon. Thank you, Vernon. So, you, do you guys realize this? Like, it's your job to sell Cutco. And guess what? Guess what percentage of our 19 million customers already had knives? 100%. Guess what percentage of them probably told the rep, sure, you can come over, or at least thought this, but they're not gonna buy anything. Like 99%. Guess how many of them, guess how many of them had knives that like worked fine? They were getting by. All of them. So it is your job to build the value. So thank you, Vern, for sharing that so passionately because guys, they, they, their life is going to be better with Cutco, right? They, they could be fine without a dishwasher. Tell one of you today in one of your demos to get you gassed up for your demos. They could be fine without a dishwasher. They could wash everything by hand, but how much better is life with a dishwasher, right? Their car could, they could, they could, they could be fine with a 2000 hour junker car, but how much nicer is a 20,000 hour, 30,000 hour vehicle? right? They, they, they could get some, you know, cheap junky shoes that are fine. They work all right. You know, I get by. If you do something as much as driving or walking or eating, I would want to enjoy it every time as I'm preparing meals. So <laughs> I got one more thing too. Go ahead. So when they say, how many of you have heard your customers say, well, you know, it's cool, but I don't really need it. Okay. All right. Like, hey, Mr. Jones, I get it. But here's the thing. We don't buy things because we need them. If that was true, you know, we want to have the house that we have. We want to have the cars that we have. We want to have all the, all the clothes that we have. At the end of the day, all you need is food, water, and Jesus. Okay? So we don't buy things because we need them. We buy things because we want them, we'll use them, and we can afford them. So do you want this? Would you use it? Can you afford it? Okay, well, hey, just let me ask, what's actually like the number one thing that's holding you back right now? What's like the actually number one thing that's holding you back? Like, oh, I don't know if I'd use all the pieces. Oh, awesome. Well, which ones do you think you would like never, ever, ever use? I don't know, that big machete one. I don't think I'd use that. Okay, cool. Let me show you this package. I think it's gonna be perfect for you. So if I showed you a package that had all the knives you'd ever want, and it was in a price range that you could afford. Would you consider doing that tonight? Perfect. Let me show you this galley set. Boom. Mm. Mm. Preach. All right. Are you guys gassed up? All right. So, Lake.